morning and welcome to the Facade webinar series, episode 10. My name is Leticia Maro. I am a Marie Skodowska Curie Fellow at the Inorinu Center of Excellence. And today we will talk about the alternatives for synthetic adhesives. I'm very pleased to welcome our speaker, Dr. Yanis Rizikovs, who is a leading researcher and the head of biorefinery laboratory in the Latvian State Institute of Food Chemistry. Dr. Rizikovs is a wood chemistry and material scientist. His research activities include, among others, the development of biologically active substances and polymer raw materials from wood, ecological binders, additives, coatings, and wood-based panels, thermal treatment process of wood and other renewable biomasses, and the effects of these thermal treatments on the hydrophobicity of wood or on the obtention of mesoporous and microporous activated carbon, for example. The presentation today is recorded, and as usual, you can send your questions in the chat. I will read them to Dr. Rizikovs at the end of his presentation. So now let's talk about bioadhesives. Dr. Rizikovs, you can start. Thank you, Leticia, for such a nice introduction. I'm really honored to, to speak about my story of alternatives to synthetic adhesives for wood-based panels. As Leticia told, I'm representing Latvian State Institute of Wood Chemistry, and uh, we are founded in 1946. We had 139 employees, 41 doctor and our mission is development of knowledge based and environmentally friendly low waste technologies for obtaining competitive materials and products from wood and other plant biomass for sustainable utilization of natural resources for economic social and ecological benefits and also we had a vision modern research center of wood and other biomass with broad research infrastructure potentialities and tradition-based creative and dynamic researcher staff open to new ideas and science challenges. Uh, our strategy is industrial research, innovation and bioeconomy policies, research and development requirements from forest agriculture and wood processing industries, which allows identifying three excellences, wood and wood materials with upgraded properties for construction, by a refinery approach for producing chemical compounds and products and obtaining biofuels and production of green chemistry products and green polymers. So we built a pilot scale hangar, started in 2018. And uh, this year we finished and we had a nice pilot scale hangar where we has uh, several pilot scale equipment. Uh, once we had material preparation workshop for, for uh, raw material preparation and also every laboratory came their dream true to obtain a pilot reactor of their, of their research and uh, developed technologies in uh, flasks. Our organizational structure, we are divided in uh, six laboratories, wood biodegradation and protection laboratory, Laboratory, laboratory of Bioengineering, Polymer Laboratory, Cellulose Laboratory, and Laboratory of Biorefinery, which I am representing. And also we had a Laboratory of Lignin Chemistry. What is biorefinery? I, I know that is, it is a complex processing of biomass, which enables uh, to sequentially obtain products with high added value from biomass and its various processing byproducts, platform chemicals, materials, biofuels, energy, etc. So silver birch and downy birch are widely used in the furniture for plywood production. And this picture demonstrates that birch bark is composed of two layers, inner bark or phloem and outer bark, which is a target material in our research projects and contains valuable products I will talk about in my further presentation. Here we can see that uh, plywood producers in Latvia is an annual plywood export of 250,000 cubic meters per year, potentially could generate about 70 to 80,000 tons per year of outer bark, which together with other residues currently is burned in the biomass boiler houses for energy production. Therefore, we identified two problems. 
that uh, one is at Beach Park is burned in a boiler house to satisfy the energy needs, especially in the plywood and pulp and paper industries where bridge wood in huge amount is processed. And thus we think that money is burned as well because birch outer bark contain great amount of products with high added value. Synthetic binders, the second problem is that synthetic binders, which are the most commonly used in the manufacture of glue and wood composites, contains toxic compounds such as formaldehyde and phenol. These composites actually are toxic to humans, both in the process of their manufacture and in the exploitation of finished products. If the concentration of formaldehyde in the air exceeds 0.1 ppm, it irritates the eyes, throat, and nasal mucosa, makes breathing difficult. And thanks to these compounds, we know the term sick building syndrome. And this is very important in the sensitive areas like hospitals and the public places for children. Uh, the problem in the world is solved by developing panels with reduced formaldehyde emission. Introducing formaldehyde-free synthetic adhesives, uh, such as isocyanides, uretans, acrylic resins, epoxy resins, uh, PVA, PE, polystyrol PET, and uh, PLA. Uh, emissions from the panel production are not evident, but uh, some issues resulting from toxicity of the adhesive itself and operational safety during the panel production should be considered. Another alter alternative is substitution of synthetic resins with bioresins like uh, uh, 5-HMF, glycol, glyoxalic acid, etc. to replace formaldehyde or using tannins, lignosulfonides and lignin to replace phenol. Uh, there are sugar-based, uh, protein-based, starch-based, and plant or bells-based uh, um, resins, uh, which we could call like bioresins. But um, uh, still, there are some problems with the bio-based adhesives because they replace only part of it, and synthetic additives and modifiers must be added to improve mechanical properties and moisture resistance in some cases they compete with food. And there is another alternative, sobrinic acid binder, which is a natural, biological, and innovative material obtained from birch outer bark. And now I will speak about how we started our research. And we start with the idea of processing of each part of the product with high added values to solve these problems I mentioned before. Uh, during the project, we identified two target objects with the highest potential. One was extractives, uh, most containing betulin. They had biological activity, could be used in cosmetics because it acts as emulsifier, antioxidant, preservative, and a remedy against the development of cancerous cells, positive results against virus infections, against obesity, anti anti-inflammatory effects and decreases cholesterol level in blood. While after extraction of uh, betulin, the residue containing suberin uh, is also a valuable raw material because we can obtain suberinic acids, which are rarely formed in nature. They are very difficult to obtain synthetically. Therefore, it should be interesting raw material for organic synthesis. It could be used also for cosmetics and, of course, as adhesives for wood based panels. And we are looking also to polymer industry for glues, coating agents, epoxides, emulsifiers, and, and the polios. So, obtained result during the industrial research shows so good properties that we decided to start to commercialize uh, this binder as well. And as a result of several years of research in the Institute, original birch wood processing method was invented and patented, and they received several uh, awards in the uh, Latvian Academy from Agriculture Ministry and uh, also from, from the livewood producer. Latvia's Finiers also started to cooperate with us. and. Uh, at the moment, uh, this extractive part of the birch outer bark uh, is already in a commercialization for a phase 
Batis as a cosmetic raw material in cooperation with uh, Batis Finieris, which is one of the largest plywood manufacturer in the Europe, about 250,000 uh, cubic meters per year. So we are uh, doing contractual research and at the moment uh, we develop the technology to an industrial level for, for betulin as a compound in 500 liters and an experimental production laboratory betulin lab has been completed and at the moment pilot plant regimes need to be adapted for industrial production. But I will speak more today about suberin and suberinic acids. Uh, as I told, as a solution for formaldehyde problems could be using suberinic acids as a binder in production of fluid wood composite materials. Developed ecological binder makes the end product to be ecologic material as well. And despite the fact that the product is completely natural, it demonstrates high moisture resistance and mechanical properties. This binder is so good that, for example, obtain particle boards and, and products can be used in the humid conditions. And what is suberin? It is known from the literature of the plant material. Suberin is a polyester biopolymer possessing a mixture of polymers with hydroxyl and carboxyl acid functionalities. After depolymerization in alkali medium, the main compounds in the suberinic acid mixture are mixture and modification in the C18, omega hydroxy acid, and alpha omega B acids. As I mentioned before, birch bark was used as a raw material. We made ethanol extraction uh, to isolate extractives. Then the depolymerization was carried out in an alkaline solution. After that, was performed acidification with mineral acids and filtration and rinsing operation to remove mineral salts from the binder. We did also characterization of the raw material by chromatography and uh, identified C18 and C22 suberinic acids with carboxyl and hydroxyl groups saturated and unsaturated. And uh, to start to produce the binder. At first, we selected the depolymerization environment, which, which environment we should use, ethanol, water, ethanol mixture, or pure water uh, with, with sodium hydroxide. And uh, we concluded that uh, binder preparation method using water as a reaction environment uh, showed the best properties for uh, mechanical and uh, moisture resistance. Still, there was a problem about the density of the particle board was too high because we set our target to 850 grams per cubic centimeter. Uh, when, the, when, when the depolymerization environment was selected, we tested the impact uh, of uh, solid wood bark admixture in the binder. We tested filtered and unfiltered uh, binder suspension in water. And we concluded that the use of a mixture of suberinic acids in and the lignocarbohydrate complex not only allows to save the filler during the production of particle parts, but also increase the yield of the binder and improve the mechanical properties of particle parts. Still, as you can see, that the density of the particle board was still too high. The last preliminary parameters we tested were which alkaline and which fraction of birch outer bark we should use. And, and uh, we tried sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide in several fractions. And concluded that the polymerization appears more aggressively in the sodium hydroxide environment, evidenced both by an elevated acid content and higher solubility in the metal sulfoxide. Obtained boards showed an increased density as well, but in potassium hydroxide and raw material fraction one to four millimeters showed the best results. And we concluded that it is not necessary to depolymerize completely the suberin to obtain qualitative particle boards. Uh, when the preliminary parameters were set out, we created full factor experimental design using treatment time, uh, pH, acidic 
calcification and alkali concentration as a variables, while density, thickness, swelling, modulus of rupture, and modulus of elasticity, and internal bonding as a reference function. The result showed that the optimal subrinic acid based adhesive was improved by raising the potassium hydroxide concentration 4%, acidifying the pH3 and reducing the reaction time to half an hour. The average bending strength value of the samples conforms to class FAP, and the average value of shear strength after three cycles of sample treatment conforms to third moisture resistance class which is the highest moisture resistance class for the materials used in unprotected exterior conditions over sustained periods. Here we can see that the particle, particle boards obtained with subrinic acid shows a better properties than required for standard requirements for wood particle boards intended to use in humid conditions. And uh, due to the fact that we are representing Latin State Institute of Chemistry, your team has a high scientific experience as well as, as, well as we are competent in research planning, uh, project leading, and development of new products and technologies. Your team also joins specialists in marketing and finances to help us with commercialization strategy and uh, with uh, performance of technical and economical feasibility study, which are the most important part if you want to speak about commercialization and potential of our product and technology. Uh, therefore, we realize, realized commercialization project, attempted the idea and uh, developed a homepage for our new brand, Suber Binder. And uh, Subrinic Acid Binder has so good potential in niche production which requires high quality moisture resistant furniture that has no negative impact on the environment and human health. Such furniture will be particularly suitable for sensitive and allergic persons with respiratory problems, as well as in public places such as kindergartens, schools, hospitals, etc. Plywood and particle board furniture is cheaper than solid wood furniture and is simple and functional and lighter. We had we defined six advantages, as I already told. Uh, binder is environmentally and health friendly, and of course, efficiency, because much more expedient use of food resources to obtain a widely used material, moisture resistance, and it is innovative material and uh, good mechanical properties. But the most important advantage that in comparison with other natural binders where synthetic additives are used in production to obtain improved properties subrinic acids containing binder acts as it is without any additives or modifiers and this means that it is completely ecological product uh, we also defined environmental impact of course less formaldehyde compounds because it doesn't contain it so course, less health problem, problems and uh, less CO2 emissions, because currently birch wood processing byproducts such as birch bark and vinyl shorts are predominantly burned in, to produce heat. This releases large amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, contributing to global warming, starting the use of a completely ecological subrinic acid binder in the wood-based panels would sequester or store the CO2 that birch has accumulated environment in the process of growth. The use of subrinic acid binder would enable furniture plywood and particle board manufacturers to open up a new market opportunities which would increase their competitiveness and demonstrate their responsibility and commitment to a healthier environment. Other manufacturers and consumers would thus be forced to think and pay attention to the problems solved by the use of subrinic acid binder. The potential market for our binder would be European companies involved in the processing of birch wood, which usually prepares their binders on site, thus providing a complete technological process. It will be easy to integrate the develop technology into the industrial environments because its implementation doesn't require specific equipment and it can be realized in existing 
binder manufacturing sites is a significant improvement. We predict that uh, the ecological binder will initially be a niche eco design product with the potential to be, become a consumer product. Therefore, in the red market will be manufacturers of furniture and decorative composites and design products that are tended to produce ecological products. As a potential market of blue wood composites is identified and it is constantly growing in the world as well as in the Europe. In turn, in the world, it is prognosticated the export value of binders will increase by 5.2% in a year. The main, main reasons for such an increase were mentioned as growth in packaging, construction, and woodworking, and technological advancements, including building materials for green buildings. And now we can see that even this trend was pessimistic uh, because of this COVID-19 uh, era, it is growing much more faster. So the natural material based segment is the fastest growing segment of the industrial binder market in terms of value. And taking into account the long term trends in a climate policy in the world, as well as the growing popularity of the low carbon economy, it can be argued that the natural binders market has a very high potential. And the potential of the binder was evaluated and analyzed with the aim to facilitate the decision making process, objectively and rationally identifying the advantages, disadvantages, opportunities, and threats, as well as identifying the resources needed for its implementation. At the moment, we try out and validate the technology at the pilot scale to make sure that it succeeds in scaling. A team of the project is identifying the potential licensees interested in the developed technology and depending on the type of uh, potential licensee specificity, concluding of the license agreement will be selected. So we are open for collaboration as in the industrial level, as in the new technological and scientific challenges in new application directions. Regarding the suburbanic acids, we realized three projects, and at the moment we are ready to meet the industry or EU funds for scale up activities of the technology from PRL 7 to 9. We are offering our partners to be the first in completely biased adhesive industry. And uh, as I told before, we have more than 10 years of research behind the developed technology, and now we are ready to enter in the industry. And maybe you are interested that subrinic acids can be used uh, uh, for polio uh, in polyurethane foams. And uh, it is known from the literature that subrinic acids obtained from quartz super is suitable for polio preparation in polyurethane foams. And we tried it as well and concluded that the obtained polyurethane foams had good mechanical properties and high enough closed cell structure. This corresponds to ISO requirements for rigid cellular plastic medium density. Spray polyurethane foams used as thermal insulation for both building and non-building applications. Yeah. Finally, I want to express my willingness to cooperate because we see that subrinic acids have the potential in various important eco and bio areas like eco cosmetics, biopolymer industry, bio based raw material for organic synthesis, bio composites, and eco houses. So, hoping for action. And uh, thank you for your kind attention. And maybe you have any question. Thank you very much, Yanis, for your very sorry. I will put my camera on. Thank you for your very interesting pre presentation. I hope the audience heard you and will be ready to collaborate as much as I am myself. And I, um, I encourage you to type your question in the chat on the right. We already have one question from Matthew Powell. 
what is the potential for this moisture resistant technology to produce external grade plywood? Yes, we see that it would be possible, especially for external grade plywood, because it uh, gives hydrophobic properties for the plywood. And external grade plywood also is covered from the outside with uh, coating and, and film. So there is a high potential in such direction. Thank you. Would this be suitable for CLT panels? From Henning Elias. May, may I ask what these CLT panels? For my knowledge, I didn't cross such combination. <laughs> cross laminated timber. Ah, cross laminated. No, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I understand. I, I didn't know because it is not uh, suitable for such. Uh, such direction because there we need a higher temperature to glue. It is not possible to glue like uh, is glued cross laminated time timber. So it, it's for uh, composites and ever hot pressing is necessary. Okay, thank you. Um, there is a question from Ali. What was the reason for producing your PB board with such high density? Uh, it wasn't our reason because uh, this binder makes these particle boards with high density if we want uh, these high mechanical properties and uh, moisture resistant properties. Therefore, uh, no, it's, uh, I think, uh, not be suitable for uh, indoor, maybe not so suitable for indoor furniture like uh, usual particle boards, it's, uh, it's another class for moisture resistant and uh, these high mechanical properties. But uh, density is our pain, yeah. We are trying to reduce it. Uh, at first, we're trying to reduce the temperature using uh, catalyzators, but then it would not be a completely ecological product, but there is possibility to reduce the density uh, here we just look at the binder as itself, uh, what we could produce from completely natural binder. And these densities, what it is, yeah. Okay, thank you. I had also a, a question. Okay, we have another question from Henning Eliasson. Would it be suitable for gluing on cellular glass? gluing a fiberglass film onto a cellular glass? I, I think that no. If there, we, if there it is possible, hot pressing, then we can try to try to glue something. But you, we, we should take into account that this binder is in browning color. It's, it's not uh, uh, sorry, forgot the. You mean it's forgot not, the name? It's not like a glass. It's, uh, it's not transparent. Yeah, 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 transparent. Yeah. Okay, but so it's not a matter of the surface to glue. It's just that it's not transparent. But could yeah, you yeah, yeah. glue it? Yeah. Okay, and I had question about the species of wood that you you considered did you did you try other species beside birch or why did you choose this one specifically uh, we chose birch because uh, from the plywood producer the, there is leftover uh, chips from birch okay. and birch outer bark and birch bark therefore we put together birch wood uh, as, we, as we love uh, that we are uh, making again birch wood from birch uh, sawdust and, uh, and the binder obtained from birch bark. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's actually but, uh, the only wood species that is used for this. Uh, we tried uh, as well uh, coniferous species, I think. Tried, uh, yeah, 
fine and uh, it was also okay there is not a matter of the filler it's just just uh, it's uh, wood as wood okay uh, we have another question from Hussein Sivrigaya. Is it economically feasible? Yeah, we see. We see that it is. So we, we make this uh, feasibility study and now are uh, speaking uh, uh, with the same uh, plywood producer and uh, trying to, to say that it is and uh, we very hope that in the near future, we will try this binder for plywood production, at least for some, some, some samples or uh, some line small to try out it. But uh, the price, yes, the price is uh, very similar, uh, lower than the phenol, phenol formaldehyde price, so yes. Okay, and I'm sorry I missed the question from Mariam. Do you have an idea about the end of life possibilities of wood boards made with super binder, lifespan, and reuse possibility? Yes, we tried. Uh, we tried that we can uh, mill the, the 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 board and uh, produce again particle board. I uh, I even tried that uh, completely mill used particle board from super binder and uh, to press it again it, it also made a, a plate but not so it the, the mechanical properties wasn't so good uh, therefore it is better to mix it with uh, normal sawdust because during the milling we decrease the the, the shape of the filler and it's uh, not so mechanical mechanically good Birds. Okay. Thank you. I think we covered all the questions. So thank you again for answering the questions and for your very interesting presentation. Uh, thank you to all the participants who joined us today. And I hope you enjoyed the webinar. I hope you will come back uh, to see one of the future webinars. And uh, we just got one more question, so right on time. Um, how long is the pressing time for a chipboard, for example? Maybe it was already said, but um, Frauke Bunzel was, um, did not hear if there was this information before. No, no he didn't say. He didn't say, therefore, he didn't hear, hear it, yeah. Uh, the pressing times without catalysts uh, is uh, 45 seconds uh, per millimeter, I think. Yep. Yeah, yeah, approximately. But also we understand that it uh, is a little bit longer than for phenol formaldehyde resins. So we are also looking on some modifiers and additives in the binder to make them more technological. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, it's very complex uh, to think about all of these uh, parameters. Thank you for replying. So now we, we covered all the questions. So I wish you all a very beautiful day and I hope to see you again in the future webinars. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening and organization. Yeah. Very Bye. nice.